Hi everyone, in this second video on my learning shader series, I'm making a scratcher effect I've seen while playing 8pool. It's a mobile game about pool and from time to time you get scratchers to get coins. I found the effect funny so I thought I could try to remake it in Godot. The idea I had to remake it was pretty simple but I came across a few problems. Without further ado, let's get started. To remake this effect, we need a way to get the user inputs and turn it into something that would affect the scratch texture to reveal what's beneath. Getting the input is pretty simple. In Godot, I will just watch for a mouse input event. But how can we use this information to remove part of the texture? My idea is to draw where the mouse is going to a blank texture and then use it in a shader. See it as creating a mask where the white part is the part you keep and the black part is the part you remove. With with this, the shader code would be pretty easy and it doesn't seem too hard to create such texture. At first, I thought I could just manually set the pixels of the mask texture based on where the mouse was. But there's two problems with that. First, it's painful to set up a drawing shape around the mouse and you have to make sure you take into account the edge case. So for example, when your mouse is close to an edge, if you're trying to paint a circle around the mouse position, you'll have to make sure you're not trying to set a pixel that is outside of the texture. Second, Second, it's pretty slow to access every pixel sequentially and set their value. Hopefully I remember that Godot has a built-in function that will take care of all the above problems. You can define a drawing shape, a size, a color and everything technical is taken care of. That's great, so now we know what we need. To sum up, this is what we are going to set up. First we set up a mask texture on which we'll draw based on the mouse position. We then send this mask to a shader, apply to the scratch texture and finally the shader shader will change the opacity of the scratch texture based on the mask. Okay, let's see how we can do that in Godot. First, I set up background textures. After that, I put the scratch texture that will cover the background. Uh, this is the one we want to scratch. To be able to draw on the mask texture without seeing it, I'm creating a viewport. I set up the viewport for 2D usage with the same resolution as my project. It's important the viewport has the same size as your scratch texture because we'll grab the viewport texture to make our mask. In the viewport settings, I'm also checking vflip because the texture is upside down otherwise. I think this is because of the way OpenGL operates. Also note that you could do the vflip in the code, but I don't recommend it. It will be done on the CPU and it's a bit slow. I believe it's done on the GPU when you check the vbox in the viewport settings. Finally, I put clear mode to never and update mode to always. Clear mode to never is the key to what we are trying to achieve here. I'll explain that in just a second when we'll see the draw function. As a child of the viewport, I'm putting a node I called drawing. You just need a node that inherits from canvas item, which is pretty much every node. That way, you are able to call the draw function. Okay, now that we have this set up, let's see how we can draw the mask texture. To draw with the mouse, I'm adding a script to my root node, in which I'm simply checking if the mouse is pressed or not. In the process function, I'm sending the mouse position to my drawing node if it's pressed. In my drawing node, Node, I'm simply grabbing the drawing position that was sent by the process function and in the draw function I'm drawing a circle with a radius of 100 at the position that was passed. Note that I'm drawing in white. This is because by default if there's nothing in a viewport the texture will be black. So our mask will actually be the inverse of what I said earlier. Black will be the part we keep and white the part we scratched. The draw function is not called every frame by default. That's why I'm calling update in the draw add function. That way, each time we call it, we update the texture. Remember that earlier I told you it was important to set up the viewport clear mode to never. If we don't set that, by default it's on always, which means the whole viewport will be cleared at the next row call. That would make us lose the preview scratch location. By setting it to never, the viewport is never redrawn and so our mask texture will get filled up as we click on it. Before jumping to the shader, we can visualize the mask texture. For that, I've added a simple texture rect that I put in the left corner. I'm setting up a viewport texture to see what the viewport looks like. Remember that when you add a viewport 
like that in Godot, it won't be seen unless you use a viewport container or that you display its texture on another node. If we run the project already, we can clearly see our mask texture. It's black by default and we are painting white as we move the mouse. Perfect, now we can move on to the shader. I'm adding a new shader to the scratch texture. For that, under material, I click new shader material and then new shader. Just like in my previous video, go watch it if you didn't already, I'm using a canvas item shader as I'm working in 2D. I want to use a uniform, which is a variable that can be accessed outside of the shader. This uniform is a sampler 2D, which corresponds to a texture. You probably figured it out already, this is going to be the mask texture. Inside the fragment function, which is a function in which you can modify the color of each pixel, we will sample the texture of the image. So in this case, the scratch texture, and we use the RGB components for the color output. This basically copies the texture to the output, so we're not touching the colors. What we want is just to change the opacity, and that's what the last line is doing. Again, we use the texture function to sample a texture, but this time using the mask texture. I'm using the R components of the image, but you could use B or G, it doesn't matter. Remember, our image will be black and white, and in shaders, black is 0, 0, 0, and white is 1, 1, 1. So no matter what color channel you use, they will be the same. I'm using that to set the alpha of the color output, but we need to do 1 minus the texture value for it to work as we intended. Remember earlier, I told you that the viewport texture is black by default, and by by default, we want the scratch texture to be visible, hiding what's beneath it, right? So we need an alpha value of 1, but black is 0, so by doing 1 minus the texture value, we will have an alpha value of 1 for black pixels and 0 for white pixels. Okay, with that, our shader is ready. We just need to feed the shader with the mask texture. To do that, in the main script, in the process function, we yield the visual server for the frame post row signal. When a frame is available, we grab it by calling viewport get texture. This returns a viewport texture that we can directly feed to our shader by calling scratch texture dot material dot set shader param mask texture with the texture. We have everything set up correctly now. So if we test, the scratch texture is covering the background. And if I click and move my mouse around, the scratch texture disappears. Of course, you could add a bit of particles and sound effects to make the scratching more satisfying. We are basically done here. But just for fun, I want to compare this solution to a purely CPU based one. You may think that what we're doing here is not so heavy on performance, but remember that each frame we're sampling a 1920 by 1080 texture and changing every pixel based on this texture. It's pretty fast on the GPU because as I explained in my last shader video, the GPU can run our shader in parallel on all the pixels, but the CPU can't, unless you're trying to go on the multi-threading route, but even with that you won't have enough cores. So if you want to see how it compares, stick around for a bit, it's going to be fun. To achieve the same result with a CPU, we can basically keep the same configuration. It's just that we won't use a shader to set the pixels. In the process function, we call viewport.getTexture.getData this time. GetData will return an image, and this is important because we need that to access the pixels. We do the same thing for the scratch texture. Before doing any work on the pixels, even just reading them, it's important to call the lock function. This will grab a mutex for the image so that it can't be modified. You don't want the image to change as you're reading it. Then we'll simply loop through all the pixels with a double for loop. We get the pixel of the mask and the pixel of the scratch texture. And we do the same operation as in our shader, which is setting the alpha channel to 1 minus the value of the R channel of the mask. We then make sure to set the pixel of the scratch image to its new value. And we repeat for every pixels. Finally, we create a new texture with the image with the new pixels and we set this texture onto the texture rect. Don't forget to call unlock at the end to release the images. If we run this scene we can see that oh my performance are terrible. I'm running at 1 fps and you can see it's struggling to get my input. Remember that we have to loop through a 1920 by 1080 textures which is 2 million pixels. This is why you want to learn shaders because they can help you tremendously with performance.
humans even to do simple tasks like this one. GPUs are made for this kind of work, so we should use them for what they're good at. Of course, in a real world situation, your texture will probably be smaller, taking maybe a fifth of the screen as we saw on the 8 pool game. But still, if I reduce the viewport to 380 by 216, we only achieved around 11 FPS, which is still not acceptable. Also, consider that you need to run other things for your game to work. I hope you liked this video and this cool effect. If you have suggestions on what to make next or how to make this shader better, please tell me in the comments below. Remember that I'm learning as I'm making these videos, so if I'm making mistakes or things could be better, please tell me. Or better, make a pull request on GitHub. Talking about GitHub, as always, the sources are available on my GitHub. Link in the description. Thanks for watching and see you later. Bye!